All right, y'all. So, uh, you know, uh, a buddy and I was talking. We were talking about some stuff. So, I just want to share a video with you guys real quick. Uh, he's going through, through a situation. So, I just want to share something with you guys. First of all, here's the thing. I've been seeing the news a lot as of recent, you know, over the last year, year and a half, whatever. And I think a lot has to do with the pandemic. People are killing each other over relationships, like breakups, specifically. You see it with, with uh, same-sex couples, heterosexual couples. And I just want to talk about that real quick. The underlying, like, the, 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 the driver behind that is, is, is uh, what's, what's making people, you know, take another person's life because they break up with them or whatever is rejection, right? Coping with rejection. Now... I'm an expert on this topic. I've had many women walk out on me, like recently, right? As of recent, I've had ladies just say, yo, I don't want to be with you no more for whatever reason, and they leave, right? Uh, and I could be honest with you, right? When you leave a relationship, it doesn't hurt as much because you're leaving on your terms and you are the, you know, you're the initiator. So the power is in, is in your hands. You have the control. But I, I want to say this real quick. Rejection, how to cope with that, Right. And again, I'm an expert because I've been left so many times. It's not even funny. Uh, what you got to first do when, when your heart is broken, like when you go through something, it's the first thing you got to do is is you got to cry. I'm just going to be honest with you. You got to cry. If it hurts, you got to you gotta let that shit out. You got to cry it out. Ain't nothing wrong in, in, in shedding some tears, right? That's the, that's the number one thing you got to do is you got to go through your grief. You got to grieve. You got to have, and, and let nobody rush you and tell you how long you got to grieve. You grieve on your own terms. Uh, obviously, you still got to be able to, to function. So make sure you, you keep doing what you got to do. Go to work, take care of yourself, but grieve. Give yourself time to grieve. Uh, that's probably number one. Number, number two is, well, I don't know if this is number two. Actually, let me reverse that. This is number one. Number one is you should have a life purpose that's bigger than anybody, first of all. Make sure you have a life purpose, right? Make sure you have a life aim, not not a goal, because a goal can be anything. And you can reach that goal short term, intermittent, intermittent term, long term. And once the goal is done, then that's it. Now you're, you're wandering off looking for something else. A life purpose is not a goal. There's a distinction. Your life purpose is what you were particularly sent onto this planet to do, why you came into this world, why you came into this earth. And it's called a life purpose, meaning it never it never ends. You know what I'm saying? It's something that you will do until the day you leave. When you find and have your life purpose, no relationship will ever trump that. No person walking in or walking out of your life will ever trump that. Uh, not only that, when you have a life purpose, you're very you, you, you'll go through less breakups because you're going to be well, you're going to be more aware and conscious of who you let into your life to even begin a relationship with. When you're walking with your life purpose, uh, and whoever you let into your life, they're going to complement your purpose. Because that's the only way you're going to let them in. Because you're going to be thinking, do you va do you compliment? Do you, you know, do you add value to my life's purpose? And if they don't, you're not going to let them in. First of all, but let's not go that route, right? Because that's like that that precedes the relationship. I'm getting the information right here that I'm telling you is preceding the relationship. That's not necessarily what this video is about. I want to give you the information about how to actually cope with. Forget that you 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 weren't doing the life purpose thing. You weren't you weren't you weren't following certain codes and ethics. So you're in the relationship. The person leaves you. That's what I want to focus on. How to deal with the break the, the heart that's been broken and torn and, and trampled on. You, 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 yeah. So it is number one. Number one, you got to grieve. You just got to let it out. Let the tears out. Let it flow. However you got to grieve. Second, journal. You know what I'm saying? Again, I'm an expert at this thing. I've been through so many of them. Journal. Get Write out your thoughts. Write out your feelings. Write out your emotions. Do some reflection. What did you do right? What did you do wrong? You know what I'm saying? Uh, write all this stuff out. Write out exactly how you feel. I feel like shit. If you feel shitty, write it down. I feel shitty. I feel horrible. I feel terrible. I feel like a piece of crap. I, write it all out. Put it out on paper. You know, take, and, and, and there, again, there is no limit. There's no restriction, lack, or limitation. You write however much you want to write. Uh, and, and so number one, number one, I would say is to, is to grieve, to write, you know, to grieve, cry it out, uh, write it out. Writing it is just another another way of grieving. Uh, also, this is probably, yeah, yeah. well, this is probably number one, self-love. Like, you got to love yourself enough, right? You have to love yourself enough to understand that, listen, no matter how much it hurts, nobody's worth you throwing your life away for. Nobody, right? Nobody takes precedence over your value and your life's worth. Right. No matter who it is. It, and, and you know, all, always keep in mind that if someone walks out of your life, 
it's going to hurt. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm high and mighty and, and, and don't understand and can't relate. The shit burns, especially if you all in. If you've invested financially, for me, that's always been my hurt because I've always invested so much financially. You put a lot of money in, you pour a lot of investments into the relationship, and then it, 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 it goes belly up on you. So that financial part really, really going to, from a man perspective, see, for me, that was, it wasn't more so much of an emotional, it was more of a financial. Most men, it's more, usually more financial. It's going to sting. It's going to hurt. It's going to really, especially if you don't come from wealth and, and an opulent family, family, if you don't come from opulence and, and a family of, of, of wealth and all of that, so you have to scratch every penny you've gotten, it's going to really hurt. Uh, then there's the emotion. So that's the financial aspect. Then there's the emotional aspect where, you, you know, as men, we still hurt. We, we, we might have a tough exterior, but we still feel it. We, it, especially if your girl cheats on you and leave, right? And, and she's with another dude. It's going to drive you nuts. When you, especially if you know she's with another man, that's going to drive you completely bonkers, okay? But here's what you have to do. I'm telling you, step by step, God, I've been through it, been through it. I've been cheated on, given bun and cheese, all kind of shit. I'm telling you, what you have to understand is this. You, one, you can never, ever control no woman. And a lot of egos, and I'm using the word intense, a lot of egos out there thinking they can't. A lot of dudes thinking they can control a woman. You can't control no woman. And here's the here's the dudes that think they can. I'm gonna I'm 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 stick a pin right on it. It's the dudes that got the you know they got they got the high value net worth money, right? They think their money can control. No, she'll just be cheating on you with the broke dude. She'll stay with you for for the money, but she's gonna give it up to the dude who's broke, right? Because it's just you can't you can't buy a woman's loyalty. It's impossible. It is impossible to buy a woman's loyalty. If she's going to be loyal to you, it's because she chooses to be loyal to you. It's because she wants to be loyal to you. In, in, in all actuality, you have absolutely, very, you have very little, very little to do with that woman's being loyal to you. Very little. If you want to be honest, right, you have very little. Because again, all the money in the world, she's going to cheat. You see it every day in the celebrities, right? Celebrities are cheating on each other 24-7 and they got all the money in the world. Rich dudes can't keep their girl. What do you think? I mean, wealthy people can't keep their woman in check. You think the average, you know, or or a guy with a couple millions can? If, if guys who are wealthy can, billionaires are getting divorced. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can't buy women to nothing. So get that. In, so so understand that. Uh, it, 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 you have to find a way not to internalize it so much. And I know it's easier said than done. But again, I've been there, been there so many times. You have to find a way to take that pain, take all that hurt, and harness that. You got to harness that energy. You got to harness it in a constructive way. Like I said, write, exercise. You got to find think practical stuff to do, too. You can't just sit here and say, I'm going to harness the energy. When I say harness, I mean you got to take that negative energy and control it and put it into something positive. That's harnessing. Take up a hobby. Go running, Right? Uh, if you've been planning to exercise and you haven't, let this motivate, let this be the catalyst, that, it, that, 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 that impetus that push you to go exercise. Uh, if you like to cook, but you, you know, you, you really don't cook, start cooking, getting, taking some culinary classes. I mean, you have to find some hobbies. You have to have some positive things to do. If you like to sew, if you like to work on your car, I mean, whatever it is you do, fellas, you got to find something that's constructive and positive to do. Uh, like I said, I myself, I'm an avid reader. I love to read. Even if the world could be falling apart, I could still read because that's just something I love to do. Find something that, no, you have something you love to do, pour your energy into that. All right. Uh, I, I should have wrote down the, like the order in which I want to say, but let's just freestyle it. So that's it, right? You 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 gotta find some, have some positive out, some some positive output, input output scenarios that for yourself. Uh, also understand, like I said, it, it's gonna play on your mind if your woman leave you for another man. It's gonna play on your mind. You are gonna feel inferior. You gonna feel less than. You gonna feel like a sucker, right? You've been suckered. You gonna feel weak. You're going to feel emasculated. Uh, these are all the things I've got, I've wrestled with. So that's why I'm speaking from experience. That's why I'm taking my time because I'm thinking like what are the things that I felt when, when these things happened to me over the years, you know, uh, you, you're going to, you're going, there's going to be a burn in your heart. That's like never before. It's going to, you're going to be on fire. This is going to be an emotional pain. Uh, 
and, and again, all of this is 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 is, is, vol is, em is emotional volatility. That, that's the term I want to call it. You're going to experience emotional volatility. Your emotions are going to be on a roller coaster as a man. And men, we're not really good with emotions. Women are, we're not, right? We become violent. So we have to, you're going to have to practice what's called uh, presence of mind, meaning you have to focus, concentrate on being aware of your internal motions, your internal movements, which is your emotions. You have to be aware of them, understand what they are, have a firm presence of mind. And this is a, this is one of the es esoteric knowledge right here. Uh, you're going to have to learn to detach from your thinking and watch the thinker. Yeah, that's called esoteric. It's hidden knowledge. You're going to have to learn to practice what's called uh, detaching from yourself, detachment from your uh, consciousness and, and, and uh, go into super consciousness where you can watch your, your consciousness. Yeah, it sounds crazy, but it's an actual science where you detach from yourself and you actually watch yourself, meaning you watch your thoughts. You become a conscious observer. You observe your thinking or oh, whatever it is you're thinking, no matter how bad and morbid and it's going to be negative. You're going, you know, she left you for another dude or there's going to be a whole lot of negative thoughts. But you have to learn to be the conscious observer of your thoughts, meaning you have to be able to step out of yourself and watch your thinking. And there's a science that's called observer effect. It was conducted, I think, in 1940s, 19, 1930, mid 30s, 40s. I don't remember exactly the year. I think it was in the mid 1900s or whatever. Uh, 19, yeah, something like that. 1940, somewhere around there. Uh, it was by, I think, uh, Erwin Schrodinger. All these great minds: Max Planck, Thomas Young. I believe Einstein even went. It was in, it was, I think, it was in Germany. And it was called the Copenhagen, Copenhagen Experiment. You guys can Google it, research it for yourself. Copenhagen Experiment, where they wanted to know, they studied a light to see if it was a wave or a particle and see how it behaves. And it's just, it's, the moral of it, it was this, or the takeaway was this. When, when they, they learned that when, when, uh, when something is being observed, it behaves different, differently. That, that's, it's called the observer effect. You can Google it, observer effect. It'll tell you to break down the whole thing. And the, the, the takeaway from that and how we can use that practically is when, when something is being watched, it behaves differently than when it's not being watched. That's what they found out by studying the, 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 the particles of light. It's a wave or a, uh, uh, whether it's a, a wave or a solid, particle or wave, excuse me, yeah, whether it's a wave or a particle, excuse me, right. Whether light is a particle or light is a wave. And depending on whether it's being watched, it changes its behavior. And the moral and the takeaway from that, how that applies in our practical life is low. It's like, if you're in a, put it like this, if you go into a classroom and the kids, and you're a teacher, and the kids were running around throwing paper, and like you walk in, immediately they're going to all be, they're going to straighten up, right? Because your presence just came into the room and you represent what? Authority. So now they're going to behave accordingly. You might have one or two that you have to yell at, but... Generally, they're going to stop misbehaving. If you walk out of that same classroom, they're going to return to chaos. And that's the observer effect. That's the moral of it. When there's someone watching, people behave differently. Things behave differently. Uh, if you're at work and, you know, your supervisor leaves the room, you might slack off. He walks in, you straighten up. Same thing, right? Uh, when you watch your thoughts, they straighten up. Same thing, right? So if you're thinking, if you, if you get thoughts and emotions of violence and anger and bitterness and all that stuff, the minute you start becoming a, a, aware of them and watching them like a ticker tape running across your mind, they straighten up. Your thoughts literally give way and behave themselves when you are consciously watching them. That's what's called. It's called presence of mind. You're present. You're watching your mind. So it's a, it's a it's esoteric science, right? But uh, it's worked miracles for me. Uh, it's kept me out of jail, kept me out of a lot of situations. Uh, and I would strongly urge that, you, uh, you know, if you're under the sound of my voice and, you, you know, you're uh, going through something or a breakup, you, you, you try to implement something of that, that, that technique or that practice. Uh, also, like I said, sp speaking specifically to, to the brothers out there, you, we don't control these women. You can't control these women. And the only way a woman is going to subject and submit herself to you is uh, if it's divine plan. If it ain't divine plan, she's temporarily submissive. 
right? Because while you guys are out having fun and you you know y'all doing y'all thing or whatever, she's going you know she's temporarily submissive. But eventually everything subsists, subsides, and reality settles in, and you see her. She's not. She's not submissive. So the only way a woman's going to be submissive to you is if it's divine plan, divine order, and that's the one that was divinely sent to you. So all else is just your turn. <laughs> it's your turn at bat. You know what I'm saying? Until the, the spirit of rebellion comes up and then she's out and you want to kill her. It's, you can't do that. You got to know that, listen, no matter how good this is, you'll know if she's submissive or not when the times of submission comes around. Because the universe is going to create scenarios and situations. You don't have to test her. You don't have to, people talk about test the woman, test the man. You don't have to test anybody. All you have to do is be the conscious observer like I just told you. You got to be watching, watchful, mindful. Because life will pre present a scenario, a perfect scenario that you couldn't have scripted better yourself if you tried that will reveal whether this person is going to remain submissive to you or not. Now, if you're at a, a vacation, you guys are at a party, a club, you're in some kind of uh, festivities and she's submissive, that don't count. That doesn't count because because she's 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 in an environment where she's comfortable. So it's easy to behave submissive when I'm when you're making them happy. See, you're providing her some kind of happiness. So she'll be submissive. But when that environment changes and life presents a scenario that's going to test that, you'll realize and she'll show and or he'll show whatever it is. It's, it's not gender basis or gender favorite. It's whoever. Right. So. Uh. Yeah, or you know, definitely understand that that listen, you don't you you can't you can't make someone be with you if they don't want to be with you, right? And here's here's the thing that you gotta get, fellas. You have to know how to take the L and keep your keep your wits about you, keep your composure, keep your calm, keep your you have to know how to take the L. You have to know how to take rejection. You have to be able to take your ego, let your ego take the back seat. Because this is that's the thing. When here's the thing: when atoms split, right? Scientifically, when an atom split, energy is released. Now, one atom splitting releases infinitesimal energy. Infinitesimal is a fancy word to say small, or or not potent, so small that it doesn't have any real effect. Right, but energy is released. This is the atomic bomb. This is how they did the Manhattan Project and splitting the bomb, Hiroshima, whatever. But that's another subject. But here's what 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 I want you to get. Every time an atom splits, it's called nuclear fission. It releases energy. That energy causes other atoms to split. They release energy. Those atoms release energy. Splitting all the atoms, those release energy. You see where I'm going? It's a chain reaction. Now, one atom split, like I said, doesn't do much damage. But when you have trillions, right? When you have an, an infinite amount of atoms splitting at the same time, again, the atomic thing, atomic bomb, right? There is E equals MC square, right? Einstein, right? Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. There is a signet, there is, again, uh, a, a, a powder. It is, a, 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 let me stop. Atomic bomb. I just said it. Think atomic bomb. That's how much power is released when an atom splits. You have the atomic bomb. Now that's man-made, but and organically, it happens spontaneously or, or uh, nat naturally. So when so I, I bring that up to say this: when two people split, you man woman split, or even uh, again the the the, 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 the same-sex couples when there's a splitting of a relationship. There is an immense amount of energy that is released because two people splitting is tantamount equation, e equating in this analogy, the atom splitting. And it follows the exact science. When two people split, there's a tremendous amount of negative energy that is released. And that negative energy translates into what we see as violence, what we see as people killing, what we see as divorce, what we see as custody battles, what we see as financial disasters, financial ruin, what we see as uh, drugs, people turn into drugs to cope, alcohol drinking, what we see are uh, illnesses, people getting sick. Uh, I myself, when I went through one, I remember I, I literally ended up in a hospital be, behind a breakup. Uh, and the re and, and again a whole plethora of other 
events, those other events, those situations, those circumstances, those conditions, those things that are happening when two people split, uh, those are the physical, what we can see, the physical manifestations of that energy that is being released. And again, this is why when sometimes some people split, uh, if that person is not that stable psychologically, if they're not too stable emotionally, that energy, that, that split, the energy resulting of that split can be as catastrophic uh, uh, as the Hiroshima, as the atomic bomb, when they go out and kill their partners or their ex-partners, their former partners, right? So all the stuff you see going on with people killing people as a result of breakups is a result of the atom splitting and the energy being released. And in this case, the negative energy. And the, and the same rule kind of applies, but in the inverse. When two people come together, energy is released, but it's positive, right? It's, you know, when you find love and there's a baby, then you get married and you buy a house and you have kid, more kids and, you know, build assets together. That's energy being released, but that's positive. Because that's called nuclear fusion. You see what I'm saying? So we, 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 we follow the science. We follow the science. You, I've figured out how to tell if your relationship is going to last a week or two weeks or three weeks. One, from personal experience. And two, from studying the science. Like the science, the science, the science, the science. I can't help but stress it enough. If we were taught more about the science, the quantum realm, quantum mechanics, physics. You know, if we were given this knowledge as an earlier age, we would do much better off in life because the scientific laws are, are unwavering, immutable, uh, unbreakable, uh, cannot be uh, avoided, uh, cannot be sidestepped, side skirted, cannot be hoodwinked, bamboozled, uh, boondoogled. They, they, you know, uh, it, so this is this is why, again. When you split from someone, you must stop, recognize what, you, what you're feeling, recognize that it's okay to feel what you're feeling, uh, understand it is part and parcel to your growth. This is one more thing that, that a lot of us are forgetting. If you, you cannot grow your body without first tearing it, doctors will tell you it's called growing pains. Any growth in your physiology first is preceded by a ripping, a tearing, a breaking before it can be a building. Proteins and your DNA and your, all of that good stuff. From a biological standpoint, that is, a, that is, that is science in medical science. We got to understand, like, we, people throwing away their lives over these breakups. Understand, breakups are makeups for you. You understand what I'm saying? They're not makeups with you and the person, but they're makeups for you. They're making you up. They're making you stronger. They're making you better. They're making you wiser. I don't understand for the life of me why people do not want to grow. Like why people don't do not embrace growth. And I can answer that. I'm being rhetorical because I can answer that. People don't embrace growth because people are, people become, uh, in, 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 what's the word? Inveterate. Inveterate means established. I like that word. People become inveterate, right? They become so established in their in their uh, their their comfort zone, right? They become so established and entrenched, like they take, like they plant, they they like they they become rooted. Their roots from their emotional tree or whatever it is sink so deep down into the soil of their current impermanent state. I use the word impermanence intentionally because nothing is permanent. So they, they, they plant these emotional roots in a state that is impermanent. And then when it's time for the growth, they're like a tree that root has gone so deep down into the emotional soil of the state of impermanency that they can't, to pull them out, they, they just, they, they fight so hard to stay in a, in a spot of impermanency. The very word impermanency lets you know it's impermanent. You're not supposed to be there indefinitely. So you, But the problem is you plant your emotional roots so deep in that soil of impermanency that when it's time for you to move, you can't. And what doesn't change, what does not adapt, flex, or bend is broken. 
And that's what we're seeing. People are breaking. They, they got a TV show. It's called Snapped. People are snapping. They're snapping, breaking. And when that split, that snap, that energy is released and we see violence. Because they're not, we all, including myself, must understand that you are here to grow. That's, your, that's like fundamental. If nothing else you get out of this video, get this. You are here to grow. You, the minute you exit your mom's womb, you began your growth. Matter of fact, preceding that, during the trimester, you began your growth. When that sperm, sperm and that egg got together, you began your growth. When those chromosomes started mixing and matching, you began your growth. So from, from inception, from conception to inception, to you've been growing. So life teaches you that fundamental to all of life is growth. So breakups, relationships are necessary for growth. But no one likes the growing pains. That's the, that's the problem. No one likes the growing pains. But again, I, uh, I, I want to wrap it up. I, I never like to make my video. This is probably the longest video I ever did. It's 26 minutes. I usually do short videos. Uh, but this topic or this subject was just so close to my, 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 my heart that I'm, I'm just in it. But again, number one thing, takeaway again, is this. Rejection is, is rejection. Okay, the word rejection, when someone rejects you, you have to love yourself enough to accept that rejection and be okay with that. Like you have to be okay with being rejected. You have to be okay with taking losses. You have to be okay with being ridiculed. You have to be okay with being mocked. You have to be okay with being slandered. You have to be okay with it. And guess what? It's okay. It's okay to be okay. And rejection is, it's good for you. It's good for you. Because if it, it shows you, it builds resilience. It builds resilience. Should you be able to, 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 to take all the pain and the hurt and the, of, the, of the investment that's being rejected, if you can overcome that, if you can find the strength, the will, the determination, and I hate when people say, not everybody have the strength, not that, yes, they, look, God didn't make me better than you or you better than me. That's a bunch of uh, idiotic, uh, nonsensical crap, okay? We all start off with the same blank sheet of paper, okay? And, and it's metaphorically speaking. We all have the inherent qualities and traits. God did not make me better than you or you better than me. Now, having said that, some are taller, obviously, there's physiological differences. But what I'm talking about is the inherent. I'm not talking about the physical features. Those are the, yeah, the totally differences there. Uh, I'm talking about the spirit. I'm just going to be blunt. The spirit, the soul of man. There is no better your soul or this spirit is better than that. God didn't do that. We all have the character of courage. We all have the character of integrity, dignity. We all have the essence of, 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 of more, knowing what's morally right, morally wrong. We all have a conscience. We all have the, 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 the gumption, the bravado, the qual These are qualities. That's all they are, traits. We all have these things. Every human being have them, without exception. From the guy that works in the basement of the building, the janitor, to the CEO of the Fortune 500. From the local congressman to the, 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 the president of the White House. All have the exact same spiritual qualities. Here's where we differ. Here's where we differ. Cultivation. Right? And cultivation, by cultivation I mean, did I spend most of my time in the clubs partying and drinking while you spent most of your time in the libraries and colleges and being scholarly? Now, output, that's input. My input was clubs, partying and drinking. Your input was schooling, 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 and more schooling. My input, your input. Now, output. My output, I might not have advanced far in life. I might have picked up bad drinking habits because I'm always in clubs. That's a higher probability. I'm around a lot of drinks. I might have a couple of baby mothers because I'm in that nightlife. 
probabilities are higher. Uh, uh, I might be not as ambitious because my, my, my ambitions was to party. So in terms of business and, you know, conquering the world, my ambitions might not be there. You, on the other hand, who is a, a scholarly, scholastic research, really had your head in the books and focused and driven, you might end up becoming the president. You might end up becoming the president and CEO of companies, starting your own companies, developing the cure for cancer, aid, some tech, the next Facebook. What was the difference? Are you better? Were you better than me? What, was I less than you? Now, obviously, again, I, I'm not going to lie. There are privileges, and I'm not unconscious of that. We, some people have more privilege than others. I get all of that, but I'm talking about something very specific, your essence, your spirit. We are all having the same spirit. It's, uh, it's what we put into it that determines what comes out of it. So, again, like I said, I'm at the 30-minute mark. I'm going to wrap it up right now. But, again, I just hope you be, I didn't you know, digress too far. The main point was here, how to deal with the breakups, and how to stay strong, stay focused, and get through them, and know that on the other side lies your rewards. Peace.